Hello and welcome to TV Africa News and thank you for always joining us. This is Africa Today. My name is Najima Luima, but first are the headlines. Chisoro voters want their MP to resign. Kenyan MP dies after heat and run motorcycle crash. Uganda cranes right back in Afghan qualifiers. Welcome once again now the news in detail. A section of voters in Chisoro municipality in Chisoro district on Monday staged a peaceful protest demanding their area MP, Honorable Engineer Paul Quizela Buchana, resign for co-signing a minority report that sought to block the passing of the anti-homosexuality bill 2023. We have more. Parliament on March 21st passed the controversial bill introducing tough penalties including death for aggravated homosexuality as well as imprisonment of up to 20 years for acts of homosexuality, promoting homosexuality, child grooming and promotion of homosexuality. The demonstrators marched along Chisoro streets carrying placards with the words we are not homosexuals, Chisoro municipality MP must resign. They later gathered at Seseme ground in Chisoro municipality and threatened to initiate a process to kick Mr. Buchana out of the house, accusing him of misrepresenting them. George Christopher said that the politician angered them by signing against anti-homosexuality bill. Other demonstrators accused the legislator of not representing their interests, saying he does not debate on the floor of the parliament, but they were surprised to learn that he was among the legislators who co-signed the minority report. Another demonstrator, Ms. Shuti Peace, stated that voting for a leader implies that he or she should lobby for services for electorates. When contacted, the accused Honorable Engineer Paul Kwizera Buchana said that the demonstrators were being used by his political opponents to spoil his political career. Meanwhile, the Chisora District Council on Monday passed a resolution expressing its appreciation for the Parliament of Uganda for passing the bill. A motion was moved by the Chisoro District LC5 chairperson Mr. Abel Bizimana before it was unanimously supported by all councillors. Mr. Abel Bizimana asked President Seven to sign the bill into law and describe the lawmakers who are against the bill as a disgrace to the nation. A Kenyan lawmaker has died while receiving treatment at a hospital after being involved in a hit and run motorcycle accident in the capital Nairobi. Kulo Malim Hassan was the second term MP for Banisa constituency in northeastern Kenya. His family told TV Africa that the MP was hit on Saturday by a speeding motorcycle rider. He was pronounced dead on Tuesday night. Lawmakers have been paying tributes to their colleague on social media. Malim was a dedicated and committed public servant, said Chimani Ichungwa, the majority leader in parliament. Kulo was a good person and particularly dedicated to his oversight as well as other parliamentary duties, said Kibwezi, West MP Mwingi Mutuse. Lesotho's parliament is expected on Wednesday to discuss a motion to reclaim some parts of South Africa. Let's take a look. An opposition MP wants legislators to declare the wall of free state parts of the Northern Cape parts of the Eastern Cape, parts of Mpumulanga, and parts of KwaZulu-Natal as part of Lithuania's territory, according to Parliament's order paper. It says the reclamation would be pursued under the United Nations Resolution 1817 that was passed by the General Assembly in December 1962. In 1871, Lithuania then Basutoland was part of the Cape Province, but in 1884, it was declared a distinct crown colony. Historically, Lithuania people were found in South Africa's Orange Free State, Eastern Cape, Northern Cape, Mpumulanga, and parts of KwaZulu-Natal. But they were forced to move to present-day Lithuania due to conflicts. Let's take a quick break. We shall be right back. Welcome back. You're still watching TV Africa News, The Right to Know. 
Grave robbers took body parts of a dead albino man in western Mozambique after digging through concrete that was used to reinforce the grave. Body parts of albinos are much sought after in the country for use in witchcraft. Moving on, Zambia's government has warned the opposition against holding anti-gay rights protests during U.S. Vice President Kamara Harris's visit in the country. Opposition Patriotic Front a Party plans to hold protests ahead of Democracy Summit being hosted in the capital, Lusaka. Miss Harris will arrive in a southern African country on Friday and is scheduled to make an address at the summit which is jointly being hosted by Zambia, the U.S., Costa Rica, Netherlands and South Korea. Some 50 opposition MPs have claimed without evidence that the event was part of an agenda to impose gay rights on Zambians. Amnesty International Zambia has called on the government to take a strong stand in support of LGBTQ rights and to ensure that the summit is not disrupted by protests. Security Minister Jack Mwimbua said that the authorities would not allow lawlessness during the summit. Security Minister Jack Mwimbu said that the authorities would not allow lawlessness during the summit. President Hakainde Ichilema has called for calm and dialogue in response to the threats of protests. Earlier this month, Mr. Ichilema pledged to uphold Zambia's laws that criminalize homosexuality. He termed them as falsehood claims that prove his government supported gay rights. Miss Harris is due to visit Tanzania on Wednesday before heading to Zambia on Friday. Away from that, Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko has made visiting Zimbabwean Foreign Minister Frederick Shava in the capital Minsk TV Africa reports. The two countries identified new areas in cooperation, including the humanitarian sphere, education, maternity, and childhood care, and baby food, Mr. Lukashenko said. He said that Zimbabwean President Emerson Nangagwa's wife would visit Belarus soon to deal with the issues. The Belarusian leader said he was continuing to deliver on commitments made during a meeting with Mr. Nangagwa earlier this year. He he said he had spoken to Russian President Vladimir Putin about cooperating with Zimbabwe and other African states and had secured his total commitment to this cooperation. Zimbabwe has achieved a lot in the area of food security thanks to Belarus, TV quoted Mr. Shava as saying on Tuesday. TV Africa reported that Belarus was helping Zimbabwe to mechanize its farms. Equipment worth 60 Six million U.S. dollars would be supplied within the next year and a half, it said. Zimbabwe was also opening its embassy in Belarus and would appoint an ambassador within the next few months. Let's once again take a quick break. We will be right back. Welcome back. You're still watching TV Africa News or the right to know. In our business, 
In news today, last month, the Auditor General reported that state-owned Uganda Airlines losses grew by over shillings 100 billion in 2022 from the previous year to a record of shillings 266 billion. It's known alone in the big club of money losing African state carriers. In fact, it pales in comparison to Kenya's national carrier Kenya Airways, uh, which this week reported uh, Kenya shillings 38.26 billion net loss for last year, uh, the worst ever in its decade. Ethiopian Airlines is a class apart but other than Air Sicilies and in recent times Royal Air Maroc, the African national carrier, is a giant black hole. This is not to beat them down or rub their faces in shame. Until about 2012, the sky did not seem like the limit for Kenya Airways and some optimistic projections had it growing into a leading international airline by 2030. Instead, its nightmare came sooner in 2013. Uganda Airlines had some good years. Founded in 1976, when the East African Airways was killed by the crisis of the first East African community, it started operations in 1977 under the rule of Field Maso Idamin Dada. A year later, Amin invaded Tanzania and by April 1979, he was ousted by a combined force of the Tanzanian army and Ugandan exile groups. But even with the Amin regime facing sanctions, it turned adversity into some reasonable success. After the fall of Amin, the new Uganda National Liberation Front government appointed former Colonel Guard Wilson Toko as Uganda Airlines General Manager. He was to hold the position until 1985. A former Air Force commander, Toko had fallen out with Amin and fled to exile where he became an academia and later joined the anti-Amin resistance. In our health news today, the situation in Malawi is still dire. Two weeks after Storm Freddy left a trail of devastation in the southern region, the country's information minister says Moses Kukuyu said the death toll had risen to more than 600 and many displaced people were still living in camps providing shelter and food. He said roads and dozens of bridges had been washed away by floods, making it difficult to provide desperately needed aid. The minister said there was a risk of outbreaks of waterborne diseases in the camps because of the congestion. He said there was a crisis in the health and education sector in the areas affected by the storm. Repair works on electricity lines damaged by a previous cyclone were still unfinished and many areas are currently without power. So even the health sector is now overwhelmed as well. Education centers also remain affected because most of the camps that have been created are at schools, he said. He said with the schools reopening, the government was having to make a tough decision to move the displaced people from the schools to tents that would serve as temporary shelters. He also noted that at least 500 schools had been damaged by the storm. The minister has appealed for more humanitarian assistance. Storm Freddy struck Mozambique and Malawi earlier in March for the second time in a month, destroying scores of homes and triggering widespread floods.
And finally, with our sports news today, second half substitute Rogers Amato scored the winner as the Uganda Cranes beat Tanzania 1 0 at the National Stadium, Dal Salam, to keep alive their Afcon 2023 qualification chances on Tuesday night. Ahomza reports. For all the blame apportioned, crane coach Mitchell Sirodejevic coming into this side, the under fire coach made the inspired substitutions and they paid off. Mato, who had come on for Richard Basangwa in a double change that also saw Emmanuel Okui replaced by Fahad Bayo in 62 minutes, latched onto another substitute, Farouk Mia's through ball to coolly roll the winner past Tanzanian goalkeeper Aisi Manula in added time. Uganda's first win moved them third and live on four points with the second place Tanzania, who beat the cranes by the same score lines last Friday in Egypt. That was the news. Thank you for always keeping it. TV Africa, please do stay tuned.